recording. Whee! Hello. Greetings. What's on the menu today? Uh, we're doing something <laughs> 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 with the uh, form leakage story deja vu. Uh, what that something is. Um, is a mystery, but I'm sure we'll find out eventually. Yes, the mileage will vary. <laughs> and right now we are still in the coming out of the hibernation mode, hibernation and holidays. So the the main goal is to just just work on something, just get the work process going at all. Uh, results are secondary. Uh, I think we can uh, we can maybe start by checking what we can delete from here because I think we have redundancies and repetitions galore. Okay. So we will start this post when the people are already uh, in the command center. So it's like uh, they are looking around and stuff. <laughs> so crew already at command center. Yes. Because the previous post uh, previous post ends with Corey gloriously leading <laughs> the people to the ah let us get to the command they love everybody follow her this incant in can no incarnation mm -hmm. this version of Corey <laughs> is uh, I don't know he's an idiot he does my head in a little bit. <laughs> Also, we don't know what side effects uh, his uh, rejuvenation might have had. Mm -hmm. uh, world building tangent ahead, uh, and uh, and the more sciencey people. We have no quarrel with science, but we are not going to focus on uh, on how technicalities work, and we are we are jumping ahead a lot. So oftentimes the main assumption is this works. <laughs> anyway, uh, the uh, the rejuvenation discussion. So I remember uh, when Coyote came up with the whole uh, temporal distortion between the uh, reality strands, or like the. The, the farther you go from the quote unquote main branch of reality, the, the farther you get into the. Uh, <laughs> the, farther, the farther you branch, uh, mm -hmm. the more distorted your time flow will be in relation to the. Uh, uh, to the main time stream. Mm -hmm. Now, from, uh, from what we have figured out since then. I would say that the whole claim about how reality works would be that it is still all one big, you know, continuum, but within this all one big train of reality, you will you will have the uh, the strands and branchings and all that. It's it's like <laughs> think of it as braids. So mm -hmm. single strands making up braids, making up bigger braids, making up uh, bigger, bigger braids, or or like the optical cable. Mm. So it all it all makes up, uh, it, it all builds up to one system. But if you go inside that system, you will have different levels, and it's it's not that the time objectively flows differently. In, in one place or another or in one layer of that uh, that fiber bundle or another but that if you manage to uh, if you manage to move between 
the strands or the, the fibers or the the streams then for you there is a difference so i think that's 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 the that's the main thing like if you if you were just sitting in the main in the central reality never even accessing those uh uh those uh, peripheral strands you would never know that uh, that certain events have already uh, played out there or certain variants have already uh, th there have already been many 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 iterations of something that is happening now but uh, it will it will be uh, it, it is it is an issue and it is a plot thing exactly because we are hopping between these timelines mm -hmm. or not timelines but uh, but the the reality braids the strands <laughs> yeah the strands <laughs> and uh, and I will also slip in the main claim here that we are not even going to attempt to uh, relate uh, this property of our fictional universe to anything uh, of how things really are uh, because well probably it's it's never gonna work like this <laughs> <laughs> but that's not but that's but that's not an issue because uh, uh, even uh, even though this claim about how reality works uh, will probably never ever relate to how reality actually works it does uh, work as a metaphor on how stories are being written like you have your main idea and then you are going ahead in the uh, you, you are examining the branches of the story and in those branches you might uh, be way ahead of where your main writing process is and and then you will be moving back and forth between them so it is it is a storytelling metaphor it is also a gaming metaphor where you have your main ga same ga save game and your uh, branch scenarios and all that. So it is all a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, back to the rejuvenation in this metaphorical how reality works. Uh, so so the problem would have been that operatives who are sent into the uh, final strands. Or finer time uh, sub time streams farther from the central axis of reality, whatever uh, they they would uh, their local time would ha would be flowing faster. They they would be experiencing uh, faster time time flow in relation to uh, to the central axis which would be a problem if they ever wanted to return to where they came from. So, uh, in order to keep the same characters around, in order to be able, uh, in order to enable uh, interactions and workings between the characters in the quote-unquote main reality and the substrands, uh, we would need some sort of techni technological and or medical solutions to uh, to keep those people around, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so me and Keori were discussing the uh, uh, the rejuvenation options, and I was like, "Yeah, okay, so maybe you have some sort of like regeneration cocoon, or I don't know, some uh, fan <laughs> fancy spot hub that gives you." That, that helps to re repair your DNA and keep you young and my thought was that let's say you have this th some sort of rejuvenation do that you can't overuse it because if you uh, if you rejuvenate your body too much at once you are also breaking the synapses uh, that you have formed which means you are also interfering with the stuff that you have learned mm -hmm. so the the idea was that uh, the, the rejuvenation while extremely handy has the downside of messing with your learning and your memory so for example if Corey 
physically the same Corey who comes from uh, from a time strand that uh, your stories have been following so far, and he is pulled into uh, he is placed into a different time strand or different uh, time space continuum. Uh, and he has been given a molecular makeover. It could be that uh, he's been given a little bit uh, too much of the good <laughs> thing, or like he's been pulled. Uh, his uh, uh, his wheels have been cogs have been turned back a little bit too much, meaning uh, that uh, some of the stuff that uh, some of the skills he has, some of the self-control he has, some of the uh, some of the knowledge he has, has is is a little bit wonky. Yeah. And tangent. <laughs> 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 so the point that I wanted to get to was that because because of the circumstances, how this particular particular Corey uh, was uh, blended into this particular reality. Uh, his uh, uh, his brain might be a bit cuckoo. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> wow, that was a powerful tangent. Yes, <laughs> I feel good. <laughs> yeah, <mate. laughs> Wow. <sighs> okay. Um. Yeah. We. I remember this discussion fondly from back in the day mm -hmm. talking about how the mind and body should be treated differently like how does how did Corey remember all, all that stuff and uh, the thing is that initially Coyote had a different uh, concept about how the uh, how the uh, characters are being pulled so let's uh, for for simplicity's sake let's let's speak about stories so let's uh, forget reality, we are speaking about story logic. So let's say you have a character who has been explored in many side stories and who has, has, many, has had many adventures and now you want to uh, pull that character along with their... you want to export character along with their experience points. And, uh, and uh, the idea that Coyote initially had was that if you are uh, quote unquote importing a character from a different uh, storyline or different uh, story variation uh, you are only pulling in their consciousness and inserting it into the uh, into the existing body that you have in your current storyline and uh, initially uh, he had wrote uh, Briar Rose's uh, exposition based on that uh, that mm, that concept, mm -hmm. and uh, after many arguments and how the reality works discussions later and branching diagrams, uh, we settled on the idea that uh, that this whole transporting uh, consciousness does not play out too well. And I think I don't remember the exact uh, time when we when we decided this, or if there even was a decision point. But uh, but I remember that at some point we we found ourselves uh, just sort of knowing that actually no, everybody the the characters are literally transported. So you you create some sort of bubble thingy <laughs> space time <laughs> con uh, space time uh, uh, space time reality containment do that that you will then shift from from one time strand to the other or from one storyline to the other so everybody who is in that bubble will will be transported will will also shift their realities Along with their warts and uh, and uh, and farts and all. <laughs> and basically, this this is uh, 
uh, kicking off this pro or like starting to learn about this uh, this process or this uh, fictional technology is what the deja vu uh, storyline is all about or deja vu uh, you could even say campaign <laughs> yeah <laughs> because it started it starts off with uh, one character arriving in a story that has already happened to him uh, or 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 like or a similar situation that that he already remembers that that has already been uh, and from there he will uh, he will find uh, that uh, many things are similar in this reality many th or storyline uh, many things are not uh, and another important point is that uh, once he's already in this reality and interacting with it, uh, he is already influencing it, which means further ripples in the uh, further ripples and variations in the story, which means more and more sub stories or sub realities. So it's like it's it's a it, it's a constant continuous process, <laughs> reality ripples. Uh, that you usually are not just aware of. I went on a tangent again, didn't I? <laughs> You're on fire today. <laughs> <laughs> but because because the tangents are so good, I don't have anything to add. So <laughs> I'm just uh, sat here <laughs> in, enjoying it, you know. <laughs> <coughs> My my concern at the moment is this uh, person one person two thing. Um, so who will who will poke at the uh, who will in innocently say, well, this looks familiar enough. When Tanicki, Mia, and Risto introduced themselves earlier, it sounded like they already had like training. Yes, they should have had training. So it it's it's more like. It's probably Corey who. It is only only Corey can can really say it. Okay, yeah, that's fair enough. And then. So maybe he tries to sit his ass down, or sort of like pokes, sits down and and pokes something. So it's like Corey and Nux are the ones uh, with the uncanny. Uh, are are the ones dealing with the uncanny valley? Everything is similar, but not so much. Uh, the f the other three uh, have the benefit of the briefing, while Smith and Moray are like they they are more clueless, so uh, they don't care either way. Uh. Okay, so Nox could say like, "Look, being the operative word, uh, how do you actually run this yeah. thing?" Yeah. Let me get rid of these old notes as well, because that mm -hmm. was confusing me a little bit. <laughs> uh, and then Corey would be like, "There's only one way to find out," because he's being a bit. I insert another shitty grin there. <laughs> yeah. Uh. And like he he pokes at stuff. There's like beep boop. <laughs> <laughs> he pokes at some stuff. Uh. <laughs> pokes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Beep boop. Uh, and actually, should Alexis uh, already make herself known at this point, or did we do that later? There could be the uh, controls are now active. Welcome, Commander Corey. Sort of, you know, this sort of uh, uh, pulpy, smooth operator voice thing. I think that was the original intention. Make it first seem like it was just an automated response, and then as time goes on, she reveals oh, herself here, to here, be. Oh, here, 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 here. Uh, there is, there is it. There it is, a little bit uh, farther down. Insert oh, yeah. helpful computer voice here. <laughs> All system online. Launching something something. 
course. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so basically, we we just need to sort out uh, what comes before that. So Alexis needs to hear uh, the conversation between Corey and Mariah, uh, so that no, she can extrapolate. Sh th that's hap that happens anyway. Okay. We are not. Uh, I mean, we need to, you know, sort out this dialogue here so that it's not overly long. Okay. Al Alexis is already aware of the situation. She. This, this is this is not the concern here. She's the most informed entity here. <laughs> uh, person two three. What do we do about the old ship? So this has to be. Smith. Oh, Mariah's Mariah's not even here at this point. So. Ah, uh, oh, yeah, she's on the beach, of course. So Smith, Knox, and Corey know about the other ship. Uh, I think let's just make the conversation between Corey and Knox. Okay. Because the others should should be busy with some other shit. So, Luke being the operative word. How do you actually reply this thing? If I know, only one way to find out. Beep boop. <laughs> nice. So we have a new ship. Uh, what do we do about the old one? Oh, I didn't think of that. Of Tate? No. <laughs> Come on now. So at this point, he digs out his data pad and uh, and picks up uh, Moray's tag or or whatever. I think the the less the less uh, details we provide about the process of dialing something the better like uh -huh. we we don't want to get bogged down with the how the phone works or how the comms work we we already assume that they do and it is like it is something mundane and uh, so something that the characters don't think about it's like It does. Indeed, your identification is displayed very clearly. Hmm. Okay, here's the thing we have a ship. Yes, I am aware of that too. Uh, lose OK. OK is one of the words that oh, okay. we, do not, we do not use in the future. <laughs> very well. <laughs> Ver Oh, Ver Ver mm -hmm. Verily. <laughs> no, no, here's the thing. No. I mean, we have a new ship. That's a long story. Corey straightened himself in the command chair. Uh, I think we could probably drop this right. Uh, he should be awkward, so there should be parasitical language, but uh, but we can vary that. Um, yeah, <laughs> so it's like <laughs> let's leave it right now, and we will we will see if we can streamline mm. it. I see. Would it not be easiest to bring the new vessel over to the landing site? But we couldn't do that. Uh, phew. Someone. To, I'm thinking to Nikki here. Yes. She seems to be the one who's calling Corey out on his non-sensibilities. Or well, not calling him out, but like, uh, pointing out obvious things. Uh huh. Alright, we'll be on our way shortly. Don't let the other ship out of your sight, don't go anywhere. I will not! <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think the the way to say it is, of course not. I, yeah. am, on, I am on guard duty, of, uh, after all. Or, oh yeah, it is supposed to be the such is the way kind of thing. Of course not. I am currently on guard duty. 
or of course not why I'm guarding it uh I like I am guarding it better so just just repeat what she said before sec like, all pets are <laughs> <laughs> Or he should huff and puff around the console. Oh, he should, uh, because he's sitting in the chair. The action should relate to that more. Uh, okay, I think this thing's running. Let's see if we can get us to the beach. Okay, and at this point, the uh, uh, exaggerated smooth operator voice should sort of like, blah! <laughs> <laughs> there, there should be some sort of startling moment that then the voice speaks. All systems online. <laughs> insert, uh, insert a. Uh, um, what's the word? Insert a cheesy chime. <coughs> cheesy audio chime. I will. I will figure out how to describe it later. But insert cheesy audio chime. And that startles the crew. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, audio or... chime and maybe maybe some lights flicker and and so basically some something that's like uh, some sort of exaggerated signal signal yeah startles crew or at least startles Corey oh yeah that's that's better okay. just just leave it I will work it out yeah uh, so help helpful computer voice. All just systems on. Launching. Just, just this and this. Amazingly, these are some quite cohesive notes. But yeah, it it should be very sort of very short and uh, and jarring, and and then comes the you may now disembark. <laughs> so I'm gonna pull this out. Um, that was neat. How did you know what to do? Um, Mux or Corey? Oh, Corey, of course. Oh, wait, actually, that could be. Uh, Nux could be reacting to what just happened, and he he might think that maybe Corey did something, and then Corey just gives him a blank stare, and then uh, he. Oh no, wait, uh, maybe make it about Corey, make it all about Corey uh, sort of getting um, getting acquainted, sort of Corey being played with. So mm. it's like uh, this, this is about Corey adjusting with the situation and he thinks because he knows that he didn't do anything. So he thinks somebody else maybe did, uh, and at some point we we should let the others sit down on consoles as well maybe. So he's like, "Oh, neat! Who did that? How did you do that?" What was the first one? Uh, who did that? How did okay. you do that? 
and and looks around and tries to get eye contact with the crew. Probably get rid of all this stuff. Uh, yeah. Looks around. Just to make eye contact with the crew. And then, Tanika, why are you looking and, at me? And Tanika calls him out on it. And then Alexis reveals herself. It was I! <laughs> <laughs> it was I, Alexis. I extrapolated your intended command sequence based on the two-way interaction. I also cleared your personal <laughs> pad of non-essential <laughs> data. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that that should be Nox that yeah. says it and it's like chuckling and maybe poking at the Uh, maybe just laughing. He's got his chuckles on. That's just smart will do. Smart works much better than porn. And then Corey, after Alexis is like, you may now disembark, Corey goes back to being. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you on behalf of my crew. We shall disembark now. Fucking <laughs> 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 perfect. He's. So, I, I. I find him really dislikable at this. At this junction. <laughs> Oh, He's a uh, really interesting character. <laughs> <laughs> we almost have the first scene sorted. Oh, okay, so there's a pause, and we will uh, we will uh, resume. Uh, observations from the middle of some pointless work uh. pointless <laughs> grunt work uh, however I will make a uh, recording end here because those were some good tangents and now we have a serviceable scene the tangent muscle has been thoroughly flexed yes in this session it was good Okay, this year's first uh, forum leakage work session capture complete. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Bye! Bye!